Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs, cats, gerbils and hamsters, everybody. My favorite brother-in-law, Tom. Hey, I hope you're all um, doing great. Let's do my favorite physics lab. Favorite. Not my favorite. But this is a pretty cool one. Check it out. Here we're taking, you know, the wedge problem we've learned to do. And you guys are awesome for doing the wedge problem. But if you can really do the wedge problem, that means you understand the wedge problem. Which means you can do the wedge problem backwards. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do the wedge problem backwards. In order to do this, you have to understand some other things, too. We're going to be using a dynamics track. That's an inclined plane. Notice, I lifted up one side of it, making it inclined. Um, and I'm going to roll a cart down it. We're going to measure the acceleration of the cart, right? Now, the key to understand this is that this is a frictionless plane. Well, if you think about a frictionless wedge problem, you don't need to use forces. The downward vector, the most perfectly downward vector, is 9.81 meters per second squared. It's acceleration due to gravity. And the, what usually would be the force parallel is the acceleration parallel. The acceleration parallel to this. So you're going to find the acceleration parallel, boom. You already know 9.81 meters per second squared as the, well, that's going to be the hypotenuse of this right triangle, isn't it, that you're drawing in the wedge. And all you need to do is use those two things and find the angle. Now, I've already told you way too much about how to do this. So let me give you some hard stuff, all right? There are two photo gate timers here. This cart has a um, blacked out part on the card here that's 2.5 centimeters long. Well, 2.5 centimeters is what part of a meter? Yeah, I'll let you work that out. All right, so that's 2.5 centimeters long. I'm going to roll it down this inclined plane. It'll first block one, then it'll block the other. Now, if you remember how we take time on this uh, really old school cool timer, the time that appears in the screen is the time that the first photo gate was blocked by this 2.5 centimeter long blackout panel. 2.5 centimeters over that time, that'll give you the velocity here. This then, when this is blocked, it will take the time that's already on the display and add its time to it and store that in the memory. So when I give you the memory, you're going to have to take that second time. From that second time, subtract the first time, and that will give you the time that the second photo gate was blocked. Okay, so I'm going to give you those two times. It's the same 2.5 centimeter blackout panel that would be blocking that. In other words, once you have the time for the second one, you already have the distance, so now you have the velocity at the second photo gate. So you have an initial velocity, you have a final velocity. What else do you have? Because we only want to do this experiment one time. Instead of repeating it and resetting this so you find the time between each photo gate, rather than do that, what I've set is these photo gates to be exactly 10 centimeters apart. Okay, 10 centimeters apart. So the distance between VI and VF is 10 centimeters. That's 0 0.1 meters. So that's all you need from me, because from that you can figure the acceleration. From the acceleration down the plane and using acceleration due to gravity, you can figure out what the angle between those must be, and then using that handy dandy geometry stuff, you can figure out what the angle of the inclined plane must be. And that's all there is to it. That is our lab finding theta on the inclined plane. All right? And uh, that'll be a PDF that you could grab from um, online on Schoology. And uh, let's do it, shall we? All you need is a little bit of data. Like so many physics labs, the setup might take half an hour. The actual data collection takes a, usually less than a minute. Let's do it. All right. I have that on and reset. I'm now going to test this and make sure it is that blackout panel that actually um, causes the photo gate to be illuminated. 
It is just that one. You see there's several blackout panels. I gotta make sure that the photo gates are set perfectly for this. I reset it. Are we ready, set, and? Woohoo! Okay. The first time, the first time is 0 0.0396. I'll read it again, 0 0.0396 seconds. Beautiful. The second time, which means both times added together, you have to subtract it to get this second photo gate, is 0 0.0582 seconds. 0 0.0582 seconds. Now, <coughs> To make sure we didn't screw anything up, what should we do? It again. Just make sure the numbers are reasonably, reasonably close. And I'm just really worried about that 0.582 number. All right, so one more time. Yeah, pretty close. So you should be able to easily get what the acceleration is on the plane compared to acceleration due to gravity, find the angle, tell the angle of the inclined plane. I can compare it because I have a little special thing that reads it, plus I can do the calculations myself. But be close to it. Uh, one question I would have though. Oh wait, there's a couple questions on this. <clears throat> What's the most likely cause of error in this lab? All right, well, we got electronic timing. Did we measure a distance? Who measured the distance? I did. Could that be an error? Okay. Um, what else? What else? What are we assuming on this lab? We're assuming this dynamics track is frictionless. Did you hear the cart run down it? If you heard the cart run down it, does that mean it is frictionless? Of course not. There's a little bit of friction. Not much, but there's a little bit of friction on it. So that would be a source of error, wouldn't it? Cart's mass is 500 grams. What would the effect of doubling the mass be on a frictionless track? I'll let you think about that one. And um, can you calculate the force of friction in this experiment? Hmm. Hmm. Can you calculate the force of friction, right? Well, all you could see is a perfect acceleration. So if I tell you what the actual angle is and you compare it to the angle you got, now could you find the force of friction? Hmm. Well, that would be something to think about. Um, so see what you get. The other question I would have is, because we know there is a little bit of friction, which angle is going to be higher? The actual angle that I'm going to use an instrument to measure or the calculated angle? Which would be the higher angle if there's actually a force of friction? Think about that one. Bye-bye.